Hey everybody, Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon coming at you today with a couple of entitled parent stories. First one, entitled mother vandalizes my car because I won't give her my parking spot. Let's jump right in. I enjoy this sub frequently, but I never really thought I'd have a genuine entitled parent story to share. However, today I cross paths with the Mega Karen and Although she seriously disrupted my day, I'm kind of tickled to finally be able to contribute. I work in an office building with about three dozen companies operating on the premises, and because of the odd layout of the building, we have six different parking lots. I prefer using the hidden lot that requires you to drive through one of the indoor lots to reach, which between being hard to find and all of the spots being marked compact, is usually less crowded than some of the lots closer to the road. Not to mention that the door into the building from that lot is right next to my office, so it's convenient in every way for me personally. Today it was raining cats and dogs when I arrived at the office. For some reason, my normal lot was unusually full. However, someone pulled out of a prime space just after I arrived, giving me a much shorter walk through the wetness to reach the door. I exchange polite nods with the guy leaving, then pull into the space behind him. As I'm getting out of my car and grabbing my laptop bag out of the back, I hear some distant car horn honking, but thinking nothing of it since it's practically on the other side of the lot. When I turn around to head inside though, Entitled Mother rolls up in an oversized SUV and slides to a stop on the wet pavement between me and the building splashing me with a bit of puddle in the process. That spot wasn't for you. Excuse me? That parking spot. I was waiting for it and you stole it from me. Now irritated. Where? The highway off-ramp? No, I've been looking for a parking spot for 20 minutes and when one comes open, it's for the first person waiting. At this point, I look up and take stock of the whole row of empty spaces she had ignored to come over and harass me about taking her space. And consider the fact that the claim she's making that whoever was waiting first gets the first available space is not now nor has it ever been a real point of etiquette. Gesturing, there are plenty over there that were open before I even got here, take your pick. No. I need that spot. You need to move now. Why on earth do you have to have this spot? Gesturing to the back seat, so my baby doesn't get wet walking all the way over there. I look in the back seat, and the kid looking back at me was easily 10 to 12 years old. Also, over there couldn't have been more than 50 feet further to walk in the rain. That's not a baby. He'll be fine. And anyway, your car wouldn't fit in this compact spot. I move and point so she can read the six inch tall letters marking the spot as smaller than average. But if you go around that side of the building, there's another lot that isn't compact spaces. Whatever, are you going to move or not? Your fat ass needs the extra exercise anyway. Already cranky because I hadn't eaten yet, now pissed that this orangutan in lipstick is talking to me this way. Well, I'm definitely not moving for such a colossal b Have fun walking in the rain. I hope you get struck by lightning. I quickly walk away while this charming example of humanity hurled abuse after me. Now admittedly, about 15 minutes later once I was settled in at my desk, I started feeling really bad that I told this woman I hope she gets struck by lightning even if there was no lightning going on in that rainstorm. I continued to feel bad for all of five minutes when the sound of a car alarm caused me to go to the window and look out. This woman had parked somewhere, gotten out of the car, and was now keying the hell out of my driver's side door while Entitled Kid recorded it on his phone. I took a quick picture of them in the act on my own phone and immediately called building security to tell them what was going on. So, guess who got arrested for destruction of property and assault? Oh, right, she also spit on and scratched the security guard who went to confront her. So, assault. 
and everything that went down from beginning to end was practically right under a security camera. So it got a good look at her, her kid, and her car, including license plate, so no way she was getting away with it. And since the slur she etched into my car door is homophobic, she may also get charged under hate crime laws. So that's fun. If I end up going to court, having to testify, ever deal with this woman again, etc., I will totally post an update. So let me summarize this one for you. Mother of the year doesn't get her parking spot, decides to come back and exact some vengeance on OP. Keys OP's car and has her child videotape it. How stupid can you be? On to our next story. Entitled mother can't accept the fact that the pool is full. Let's jump right in. Almost eight years ago, I was volunteering at a local rec and pool center. Part of my job was to hand out tickets for the pool. Because there was a limit to how many people were allowed in the pool, I had to ask each group to get the exact number of people actually swimming. This was summertime, and that meant we always had long lines of eager kids and their families. Most of the time, there were a few spots open after processing those long lines and allowed latecomers to go in. However, there were a few cases where the pool was full and we had to turn people away. Most parents understood this and came back at a later time of day or the day after, but some parents took real offense to this. This is one of those cases. So it's Saturday night, and we just got done processing a long line of people for our last pool schedule for the day, which was 7 to 9 p.m. I handed out the last bit of tickets and put out the pool is full sign by the entrance. I saw many families approaching the entrance, reading the sign, then leave. Around 7.30 p.m., entitled mother and kid around age 6 came. Entitled mother wanted to get into the pool, to which I pointed out we are full and can't let anyone in anymore. Kid's face went from excitement to disappointment and she started to complain about how was I supposed to know and you guys need to make it more clear. Keep in mind, there are other front desk people in the lobby with me and they are trying not to give her the stink eyes. I smile and calmly point out the large and obvious sign outside stating the pool was full. One of the families came out of the pool and our entitled mother started to raise her voice and demanded to take their spots in the pool. I explained that we can't do that and she would need to come back tomorrow. Entitled mother says she'll stand her ground, literally, until she and kid are allowed to enter. To which I respond she'll be escorted off with security if she isn't willing to leave by herself. She glares at everyone at the front desk huffs and leaves. Did I mention Kid was on the verge of tears? I felt really bad for turning him away, but I knew I had to keep my professionalism. Now you think that's the end? <laughs> no. You see, another part of my job was to make rounds around the building for any suspicious activities. I wasn't allowed to confront the said suspicious individuals, but I was allowed to tell them off and radio in security guards if necessary. Part of the rounds involved a small outdoor playground area that connected the swimming pool and the parking lot via one-way fence gate that people used for a quick exit to the parking lot. As I got closer to the playground, I saw entitled mother trying to climb over the gate while kid watched her from the parking lot side. The gate was on concrete stairs, so the possibility of someone toppling down the stairs attempting to climb over was very real. I shouted at them asking what's going on and entitled mother says since I was rude and won't let either of them in the pool, she decided to take matters into her own hands. She's going on her rant and struggling to get over the gate while kid is screaming, crying and begging entitled mother about how I said they can come back tomorrow, about how it's against the rules and asking her to stop or she'll hurt herself. I called security and she was removed from the building and was blacklisted. Thinking back, I feel super bad about disappointing kid like that, but I've seen so many cases where the overcapacity of people caused absolute chaos and even some injuries. It surprised me 
that a six years old had better sense than a grown woman. Doesn't it seem like in a lot of these stories that the kid has a lot more sense than the entitled parent? I don't really think these are entitled parent stories. These entitled parents seem like people who have some serious mental defects and could really benefit from some kind of therapy. On to our final story. I don't care if your leg is broken, I want the window seat. Let's jump right in. This happened close to five years ago, so bear with me please. Backstory, back in seventh grade, I went to my ex-friend's birthday party. The party was held at a roller skating rink and I ended up breaking both my ankle and my leg by falling, to the point where I needed surgery. While my ex-friend first showed her true colors after this incident, that's a story for another time. Today, we talk about how a trip to a place famous for something that sounds similar to the Pace Beetle. If I remember correctly, we went to this place for my birthday. It had been a few months since I broke my leg and ankle, so I was in a walking boot and had crutches, as I still couldn't put a lot of weight on the leg that was broken. I decided to invite my ex-friend. Now, looking back, that was a horrible, horrible mistake, and I should never have done that, especially considering after what she'd done when I hurt myself at her party. But I was a 7th grader who didn't have a lot of friends, so... Anyways, on the drive there, all she did was complain, like I'm not even kidding. She complained about the heat, about food, we hadn't gone to eat where she wanted us to, and about how terribly boring the car ride was. On the way there, I was in a window seat and so was she. My brother was in the middle. Now, my brother is super tall, so I can't imagine he was comfortable, but he wanted to make us happy. Another thing about this was that ex-friend had put all of her stuff in the back seat. Forget about the trunk of the car, she didn't want her stuff to get messy or ruined or squished and demanded that she get to have her stuff with her. Of course, her entitled mother agreed and when me and my brother started to complain, she yelled at us. She can have all her stuff with her, she gets bored. Besides, you two have your stuff. Now, note that the only thing me and my brother had was a book and a pillow each. We had put all of our stuff in the trunk like we were supposed to. When my mom questioned it, she did the same thing and because my mom wasn't in the mood for an argument, she let it slide. So ex-friend put all her sh** in the back seat of the car and literally squashed us just so she could be comfortable. We dealt with it. Eventually, we got to the place we were going for my birthday and surprisingly, she was very well behaved the entire time we were there. But then it ended. There's always this. As soon as we got back to our car, it started to get real. Ex-friend demanded she get a window seat again and that my brother should sit in the middle. What? I don't want to sit in the middle. It's too uncomfortable. I get car sick. What? You've never gotten car sick before. I do. Why can't brother sit in the middle? This is when my mom stepped in. Because he had to sit in the middle on the way here. It's only fair that you sit in the middle on the way back. She was speaking very calmly, but ex-friend wasn't having it. No, it's not. Why can't OP sit in the middle? She didn't sit in the middle on the way here. OP can't because she has a broken leg and has to be able to actually have room for the boot and everything so she doesn't get hurt. That's just an excuse. Mom! Her mom came over looking confused. Tell OP's mom to let me sit in a window seat. They aren't letting me. Entitled mother frowned and looked over to my mom. Just let her sit in a window seat. Brother or OP can sit in the middle again. But that's not fair. My mom cut him off. No, ex-kid is sitting in the middle, I already told you. Brother sat in the middle on the way here, and OP is still healing from her broken leg. She had had just about enough. Entitled mother looked as if we had just slapped her. What? How dare you? Ex-friend needs a window seat, she gets car sick. She doesn't. Besides, OP doesn't even have an actual cast on anymore. She doesn't need a window seat. She's probably even faking how much pain she's in. Now, this pissed my mom off. Excuse me? 
How dare you? She is very obviously still in pain. Do you even know how much time it takes for two broken bones to heal? Then add the time to heal from the surgery? Brother and OP get the window seats. Ex-friend can sit in the middle or you can catch a train ride home. I was almost crying by now because I hated being told I was a liar. Ex-friend started legitimately bawling and screaming about how she needs a window seat. My mom had enough and started throwing their stuff out of the trunk and telling them to catch a train home because they're being so disrespectful. It was at this moment that ex-friend started coughing and making it seem as if she was having an asthma attack. She doesn't have asthma. All the while still screaming and crying while putting on this charade. Look what you did! You made ex-friend have an asthma attack! I'm calling the cops for abuse! Yes, she actually said that. And then, she actually called the cops. My mom was forced to wait for them, because if she didn't, she could be charged with fleeing the scene. An ambulance showed up to deal with ex-friend, and shortly thereafter, cops did too. Entitled mother stormed up to them and started screaming about my mom. Arrest her! She abused my daughter! She hit her with a stick! She was verbally abusive to both me and my daughter! My mom didn't even have a stick in her hand. She had a water bottle. The cops seemed baffled and listened before talking to my mom, who told them what really happened. The cop was almost shaking his head with disbelief at what my mom was saying, while entitled mother was nearly purple in the face with rage and screaming about how my mom was a liar. As for ex-friend, well, the paramedics determined that it was not an asthma attack and that she just made herself sick with all the screaming and crying, so they told her to relax. And once she did, they left. After the cop got all of our statements, he determined that based on eyewitnesses, none of what Entitled Mother was saying actually happened. Duh. He let Entitled Mother off with a warning for disturbing the peace and told my mom that she should just take them home and be done with it. My mom got ex-friend to sit in the middle, she definitely wasn't happy, and reluctantly agreed to take them home. We dropped them off at their house without a word and then drove to ours. It only gets worse from this incident, but those are stories for other times. So, I know the police officer said that they should drive them home, but if this were my situation and I were the one driving the car, I would have said no. They can take a cab, they can take a train, heck, they can jump in an Uber, they're not getting back in my car. Life is just too short to deal with idiots. I want to thank all of the OPs for posting their stories to the Entitled Parents subreddit. You can visit them all at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comment Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends. And we'll see you in the next one.